Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, where we respond to your questions on economics, on political philosophy, on history, and on culture. All right, here's Kevin and a question on history about trends in political theories between what is commonly known as left wing and right wing. Um, do we go between one or the other, really? Or are we living more in a one way, are we taking a one way trip down the left wing? road if you wish and then i'm going to add something we better hope that they're right if that's the case i think that's a great question i mean a lot of people do tend to portray history as, as this pendulum you go one way you really have gone too far you swing the other way but it often feels as though really it's a one-way ratchet click 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 every time the left gains something it's permanent if the right ever does gain something it's purely temporary and funnily enough, I run into a lot of conservatives who basically seem to hold the ratchet view. Every time we suffer some defeat, they say, oh, we've got to stop fighting that battle. It just makes us look stupid. We've got to, we've got to go on to the next loss. We've got to move on here. And, and thus, you're just always being pushed in one direction. And if that really is how history works, then yes, we better hope that the left has it right. Because essentially, they're getting their way. The last 50 years have not been kind to conservatism on all kinds of fronts, from the growth of government to radical social policy, especially connected to gender. But I'd like to hold out some hope here. I've, I've always rejected the ratchet view, this notion that all the right can do is try to lose slowly and with an elegant, sophisticated air about the whole business. At the same time, it's clear if you look at history that most of the time, things seem to be going from bad to worse. And the reason I hold out hope despite all of that is that I think that it's a lot easier to let things slide than it is to pull your socks up and get things back together. And that's why I think, on the whole, periods of slow decay tend to predominate. But every once in a while, people really get worried, and there is a sudden, what Gertrude Himmelfarb, in speaking of the 19th century in Britain, called the remoralization of society. And that, indeed, is my first very hopeful example. We tend to forget these days, especially this model, everybody in the past was stuffy and boring and didn't know anything until we came along, that the late 18th century was a time of very loose morals at the top of society and lax living, indulgence and promiscuity, all this kind of stuff was openly flaunted at court. And then you get the Victorian period where a whole bunch of things change for the better. Family life becomes more stable. There's a considerable drop in consumption of alcohol, both in Britain and in the United States, as the 19th century progresses. People do get worried about the way they're behaving and they make a real effort to fix things. Not coincidentally, governments get smaller and less ambitious in that period. It's when citizens are relying on themselves that things tend to go better. But then, when things start to go right, you get this courageous rebel pushing a little bit here, a little bit there. And it is, you see, it's like if everybody's dressing with a certain standard of decorum, and the person who dresses just a little more casually seems to be a free spirit. And then everybody else dresses a little more casually. And then the next free spirit gets even more casual. And you see it moves slowly and steadily in the direction of everybody wearing flip-flops and t-shirts to lecture. My own father, taught at the University of Toronto, said he was one of the last people to stop wearing his PhD gown to lecture. You'd be laughed off the stage if you did that now. And yet what's the result? Nobody's a rebel. There is just a real falling off of standards. But what you could do, you couldn't gradually start, you know, tightening your tie a little, wearing slightly fancier shoes. That would just be silly. But you could make a dramatic leap back to wearing those PhD gowns. And the same thing is true, I think, when it comes to things like government. It's easy for government to get slightly bigger at each election, promise people a little bit more, get a little bit more careless about budgeting. It's easy to be tolerant of slightly less rigid arrangements when it comes to family. But you'd have to cut government dramatically, rally people around a reduction in the role of the state that was bold and decisive, and turn the clock back 60 years at one go. As I hope at some point we'll also do with respecting the sanctity of marriage and the importance of lifelong commitment, and stop using a bunch of fancy euphemisms for just doing whatever you like, and calling it liberation. Because it really liberates whoever cheats first in the arrangement, and I think that's a bad thing. And there are other periods in history, I even think in some ways, the early Roman Empire, the Republic had really fallen to bits. And in the early days with these wise and austere emperors, Augustus and Tiberius, you did, I think, get a pulling together, even socially and certainly in terms of the mechanisms of government. Now, I'm not praising benevolent despots. I think they're very dangerous to liberty because they create the impression that despotism is safe. But I'm saying that there are periods of dramatic improvement and 
long periods of slow decline. So I don't think the left has it right. I don't see how when they've knocked everything down and cleared away the rubble, they're going to construct anything. But I think that just because things are normally going wrong is no reason to despair. They're normally going wrong slowly and periodically they go suddenly and dramatically right. And what we need to do is make sure another period of that sort happens and the sooner the better. So there's no point, in other words, for conservatives to look for incremental changes in the what they call the right direction, in the right wing side of things. There's really a need for something drastic. Yes, because you have to be willing to say things are wrong, we should set them right. It's but that's going to scare people. It's easy to slide down hill it's impossible to slide uphill right. we, we, we got to scare people and then we've got to inspire them tell them they're part of a heroic story a great adventure awakens them don't be afraid if you're laughed at because that's always what happens to real rebels and say we're the real rebels because we want to conserve we don't want to just coast into the land of progressive nirvana which is in fact a wasteland we want to build something worth building all right then. Hey, if you want to help us along, uh, you can check out the website, johnrobson.ca. You can get uh, all kinds of information about our projects there. And if you want to ask your question of the professor, you want to play along with this feature, uh, the URL on your screen will take you to the page where everything is explained. Thank you and see you next time.